So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and a painting update on some of my more recent projects. Um, been a fairly productive week or so. I've um, because the Bruce's in Ireland project is coming towards an end. I've been sort of uh, taking the opportunity to uh, sort of diversify a bit in what I've been painting and um, start to do some of the projects that have been sitting there, sort of half done or just needing finishing off and. Um, these are a case in point. This is a pair of um, German Panthers. Um, these are um, Flames of War Battlefront uh, plastic models. Love them, really love them. Uh, I think they're fantastic models to make up. Um, they come together really well. And uh, I think the effect is pretty damn good for the price. So I had these a little while uh, when I did one of the, bought one of the uh, late war German uh, boxes of, of stuff. There were plenty of them and uh, I only just got around to doing them so I'm pleased I did. Um, now if I was clever I'd be using an airbrush to do the camo but I'm a bit scared of an airbrush so um, I just used uh, a paintbrush and dabbed it all over. So the under colour is a sort of, uh, it's not actually Dunkel Geld, it's um, a sort of sandy colour and then washed with um, Agrax um, to, to, to dull it down a bit and then uh, then the, the, the green and the brown applied a bit like I would imagine they would have done with a mop so pretty much a, a knackered old brush just sort of dabbing it on and just putting it in the sort of uh, what approximates the, the style of the time and uh, on the bases because of course you have to base vehicles it's the law um, they are using, I, I put on Vallejo mud, um, which I've then sort of used again with an old paintbrush, just sort of push up around the wheels and uh, splatter marks on the uh, on the sides and the rear of the tank, just to show um, that it's had a bit of a, a bit of a bad time going through the mud. Um, but I'm really pleased with these fellas and uh, nice to get them done. And then next up, this is a uh, Hummel. Um, anti-tank or oh, sorry um, self-propelled gun of uh, 15 mil again battlefront um, flames of war plastic um, I, in O group which is primarily what I'm using my uh, 15 mil uh, second war second world war figures you don't really need artillery uh, but you do it's a good way to denote how many off-board uh, barrages you've got um, so um, I've got another one of these to paint up which I'll do um, which will then just be used as sort of a, a marker um, but you know it's a nice kit and I thought I'd put it together and uh, it seems a shame not to get to see the table in some form or another even if it's just sort of sitting off the table as a marker again exactly the same paint job as I did with the Panther um, and I'm quite pleased with how it's come out and then this is the anti-tank version um, I didn't want to do four uh, sorry, didn't want to do three of the self-propelled guns because I'm never going to need that many. Um, so I've done two self-propelled. The other one I haven't painted yet, but uh, and then I did one as an anti-tank gun. Um, this is, I believe, it's an 88 that's on this gun. Uh, this gun is an 88 on this vehicle. Um, so quite a fearsome open-topped anti-tank um, tank destroyer. Um, again. Exactly the same process with this as with the others, um, and um, you know, it should be a nice addition to my O group late war forces. And then everyone needs a Stug or two in their army, don't they? So, this is a late war Stug uh, with a long 75 on it. Um, did the crew member out for a change just because pff, I always seem to leave the crew members out, um, have them um, buttoned down. Don't know why. Uh, probably just ease, really. Um, but this will this will join my uh, late war German forces again. Plastic again. Uh, Flames of War uh, Battlefront. Um, really nice uh, models to put together. Dead simple um, and um, quite effective, I think, as a as a unit. So as Crocodile Dundee might have said, call that a tank destroyer. This is a tank destroyer. So this is a uh, pair of elephant um, tank destroyers for my 15mm later war German or sort of mid-war, mid to late war German forces. Um, I was looking through the um, new O group, or relatively new O group supplement, um, looking at the Eastern Front campaigns and there's uh, 
uh, a campaign as a, a scenario in there which features the elephants so that was enough for me to uh, uh, dig these out of the pile of opportunity and paint them up uh, they are um, this time they're not plastic which I which I wish they were because they are that really annoying resin metal combo so the, the tracks and the gun and even the um, uh, hatch tops are all metal uh, and the rest of its resin I don't like it. Don't like it. Um, it's really hard to get the barrels straight because invariably they've got some kind of kink in them, um, and I just find them very difficult to put together. Um, the gluing resin and metal uh, takes a while to set properly, and then it never seems to quite set exactly how you wanted it to. Um, anyway, the effect is okay. They've come out quite nicely. Um, again, same process um, with the um, the sort of sandy. Uh, yellow base color washed with uh, agrax and then uh, the uh, green and the brown dappled on with a very knackered old paintbrush um, and then uh, I think I did wash them again and then a very gentle uh, dry brush over the top with a um, uh, I can't remember deck tan I think it was uh, just to get that effect so um, not sure how often these will see the table but um, they are going to be useful for that sort of uh, uh, Kursk type period game, uh, which inevitably will do. So there you go. So next up, some more 15mm um, German armour for my O group plans. Um, these are late war uh, variants. So we've got um, a Jag Panther at the front, uh, Panzer IV on the side with its shirts and on. And I think that's a Werbel wind or whatever the anti-tank, anti-aircraft um, variant of the M of the Panzer IV is. Um, all of them are plastic uh, battlefront uh, plastics for uh, Flames of War. They were left over from that big box set that I bought some time ago, and I just thought, so I'll just finish them all off. Um, so that's what I've been doing, just working through the backlog of sprues. And just to get them painted up and uh, put away uh, for the next game. Not sure how often I'll use the anti-aircraft uh, tank, um, but um, I had plenty of uh, Panzer IVs, so I thought I'd do something a bit different. Um, and you know, you never know. You never know, do you? Um, so pleased with these fellows. Uh, again, same as with the other tanks. Um, I've done it hand uh, painted uh, because I'm a bit scared of. Um, of, a, of, of an airbrush and um, I think they've come out pretty well um, using sort of a an approximation of Dunkelgelt and then uh, the green and um, sort of uh, I guess it's sort of very reddy brown um, I think it was a mahogany paint actually um, dappled on with a with an old brush to, to try and approximate the effect of, uh, of like soldiers applying it with a with a mop which is pretty much what they seem to have done so there you go three more done so next up this is um, another load of battlefront plastic actually no these aren't battlefront these are plastic soldier company 15 mil um, Hannah Max and I've just painted them up as sort of early um, earlier war variants um, mainly because I've got plenty of the late war ones and I just thought let's do some early war ones for some of the early uh, German, uh, so the early um, Russian front games that Jonathan and I are planning to play using the new um, Barossa um, supplement that Dan, um, Dave Brown's uh, pushed out. So um, yeah, lovely kits, really nice to do. I do like these. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a metal figure uh, man, but I do like these plastics, uh, these 15 mil plastics. They do come out really well simple to put together and paint up equally simply um, these I think from what I remember I sprayed them black matte black underneath and then um, heavy brushed sort of drag brushed a lighter gray over the top and then an even lighter one of almost a deck tan over the top of that um, to get that effect and, I, and I'm quite pleased with them um, picked out the bits of equipment I put on um, with the front four I've put the machine gun um, guy firing over the front um, because I just thought they're probably the ones that we the platoon um, carry squads the other ones will probably be more for observers and um, pioneers and so forth so uh, 
there you go all done and um, very pleased with how they came out so I wouldn't want anybody to think that it's just 15 mil uh, that I've been working on oh no 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 um, so uh, I've got some weird shit as well uh, this is um, a clan for Bushido the sort of fantasy Japanese skirmish game um, which I've never played and haven't even got the rule books for um, yeah this is um, mainly because Martin Seventh Son has been going on and on and on about how what a great game it was and how he was thinking about bringing it to um, CrackCon in October um, and I've mentioned a couple of times on the stream a number of times this uh, uh, or oh, a group of Bushido figures um, were in my uh, purchase box from one of the uh, retailers or the other um, and then I took it out and then I put it in and then I took it out and um, this time they suddenly arrived in my house so um, this is uh, the Young Pirates as I say I've never played the game so I've no idea what they're like I just thought they looked cool mainly because of the shark man uh, in the middle there with a samurai sword and also uh, the additional character that I picked up it looks like it's almost like a hammerhead um, hammerhead shark kind of figure I just thought that was really cool and the guy with the net's pretty good as well so um, yeah so I uh, I bought these from Wayland Games um, because they had them in stock and um, they were just fun to do uh, they did come on slaughter bases but I chopped them off um, and because these are supposed to be pirates I uh, cut them off those slaughter bases and um, uh, bought some resin um, well deck type bases from I think it was Tiny Worlds or somewhere like that um, and because uh, I just thought it would make them look better that way so I think they do they look like they're on the deck of a ship ready to cause mayhem um, in the Bushido world don't know whether they do or don't but they'll be fun to have a go at so there you go another group of figures painted up and another distraction not uh, avoided and then next up um, for those of you who follow the plastic crack podcast uh, they do on a Monday night um, we had Alan Perry uh, from Perry Miniatures on um, to talk about well particularly around his Ottoman figures that he's working on but also some of the other projects that he and his brother are working on um, always great to get the Perry's on I think it's the third time one or both of them has been on the on the podcast so really grateful they, they give us their time um, but I thought in honour of that I better paint up a few Perry figures so um, I've been looking to do a Spanish uh, Napoleonic Brigade for Black Powder or General Darme um, and so I pulled out of this stash of opportunity um, these guerrilla artillery uh, battery um, the uh, the some of the newer casts that Alan uh, worked on uh, sculpts that Alan worked on some of the gorillas are just amazing um, I've got some infantry which I'll show you in a minute um, and at some point I'll buy some of the lovely cavalry that they he did um, but I wanted to put a gun in the battery uh, it's in the, uh, the brigade and uh, I thought I'd use the gorilla one just because um, they're just colourful, interesting and a bit varied. Probably have to be inexperienced troops or whatever, um, but um, it'll be worth it. So, um, yeah, really pleased. Oddly, in the, uh, the, the pack comes with, um, I think it comes with seven figures, um, which is a slightly odd number uh, for, for a battery. Um, so I basically split three and three. Um, and... Um, you have to use they don't come with their own gun you have to uh, uh, buy a French gun but that's fine because they've obviously been captured from the French so there you go um, really nice really nice figures great fun to do um, and makes me hanker after doing a whole load more gorillas uh, at some point so next up something a little bit different and not really a paint job as such um, these are some cacti um, so I bought these in, would you believe it, Ikea. They were selling off pots of three of these. They're plastic, obviously. 
little tubs like that and all I did was pull them out of the thing cut the bottoms off straighten it out and then set it into a base with some Vallejo sand colored some rocks and a few tufts and, and I think they'd be quite effective as terrain pieces for um, well, I want a cowboy or um, dead man's hand, etc., etc. They're quite large, but that doesn't matter. I think they, I think they work pretty well. So a little cheap uh, piece of the train. I say three of these for a pound can't go wrong, can you? Plus the cost of a little bit of basing material um, is a bit of a bargain, if you ask me. So um, they may see the table at some point in some of my western games and um, some more. Uh, terrain features. These are, um, well I think they were called Romano British um, buildings, but I think, that, I mean they could be anything really from um, Dark Age through to, well I guess they could be Romano British or even into the Highlands, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. They're resin models, um, solid, so they are what they are, So, uh, but I think they'll be quite a nice addition to the train table. Um, for that sort of period there uh, I've just dry brushed well I, I basically undercoated them grey uh, used contrast uh, is it agress whatever it is dune uh, the sort of yellowy colour on the um, on, on the thatched um, area on the stonework it was just literally um, uh, a wash dark wash over there and then a dry brush over the top um, and then a bit of a dry brush over the um, o over the thatched with a um, sort of a sandy colour, um, and I think it's been quite effective. Quite pleased with how they've come out. So, um, bit of terrain, more terrain for the table. So next up, um, another sort of, I guess, sort of addicted. Well, no, another kind of project that I have had uh, in planning for quite some time. Um, got distracted by lots of other things, so uh, I really fancied having a go at uh, Ducks Britannia, the lardy sort of, uh, I guess it's like a, a dark age version of sharp practice from what I can understand, um, and I really really fancied having a go, I mean who doesn't like the Age of Arthur and all that kind of malarkey. Um, now I've got a Saxon force because I had a, a force for um, a saga and um, so that that's pretty much all I need. There's a couple of extra figures I picked up just to sort of make bulk that army out. But I thought I'd have a go at the Romano Brits just because, um, well, they're Romano Brits and I thought I'd have a try at them, was the honest truth. So um, these are, um, I believe these are uh, Gripping Beast figures. I've just noticed the basing of this guy hasn't been finished off. And uh, there's the edge of the shield. Oh, jeez. How many times do I see that when I put them on, on film? Anyway, uh, these are a group of uh, uh, sort of unarmoured uh, warriors with spears. Shields are, um, uh, oh god, what are they? Little big man, of course they are. Uh, shields to fit, and um, I thought they were just a lot of fun to do. Really simple, really easy to pull together, um, and um, quite effective looking, I think, as a little unit. Put on the uh, 25 mil um, bases and um, yeah, ready to go stick it to some Saxons um, at some point. So there you go, first unit done. So I really don't know what possessed me to do these yellow and green, but I did. Uh, this is a group of archers to go with the uh, spearmen for the uh, Ducks Britannia Romano British force. Um, they're again, they're gripping beast. Um, not much to say about them, apart from the frustration. Oh God, Gripping Beast, what is it about hands with their figures? Jeez, if it isn't drilling out hands, or in this case, with these ones, the hands um, uh, came separate from the rest of the figure. Now, I don't understand the logic of it. Um, it must be something in the molding process, because to me it's like, well, why? Why not mold it as one piece? It's not like you can get any variation by moving the hand position or anything like that. Um, yeah, but they just, as a result, they're really, really weak. And a uh, number of times these have fallen off, even though I've super glued them and used activator on them and blah de blah de blah. Um, really frustrating. Anyway, um, yeah, so some archers done. I, I'm not sure I like this yellow. 
it's come out quite dirty, uh, quite sort of uh, scruffy looking in the painting. Um, and um, certainly under this light, they don't look their very best. I may redo them a bit, but anyway, some archers. You don't, they don't play much part in, in Ducks Britannia, so it's not priority. So next up, a group of more heavily armoured um, Romano British warriors. Um, these are predominantly gripping beast. Um, I think it may, maybe one or two foot soles have, uh, have dropped into this collection. Um, I don't know, I bought them a while back and they've sat in a box for a little while. Again, some wa wonderful little big man shields that just bring the, bring the unit to life, I think. Um, and also the banners are also by, by little big man. Um, really pleased with how these fellas have come out. I think they look really effective as an elite unit. Um, lots of mail, lots of aggression, um, and uh, should be quite effective on the table, I would imagine. We we'll, shall see. At some point I'll have a game of Ducks Britannia and I'll find out how effective this unit truly is. And then next up, another unit of um, more elite warriors. These are probably more lords than anything else with their um, standard bearers and command figures. Um, at least a couple of these are foot sores. I think one's a resin, in fact two are resin, one right in the middle in the front with his shield in the air, um, he's a resin and the guy with the windswept, uh, looks slightly smaller scale, uh, is also a foot saw, uh, that's a resin one. Um, yeah, not much more to say, a little bit of man shields again, um, The and the banner um, is also a little big man one, um, really pleased with how this unit came out, I think it looks... Uh, really good um, and um, yeah look forward to having a, a fight or two with them at some point. So next up here are some Spanish uh, Napoleonic guerrillas uh, from Perry's so they go along with the uh, artillery piece I've already showed you or the two artillery pieces I just showed you. Um, these are part of the newer guerrillas uh, range that they pulled that I think it was Alan Perry did um, Really nice models, great fun to do. You can just sort of go a little bit wild with colours, which is kind of fun. I mean, I'm very into colour at the moment, don't know why. Um, now, I've based them two to a base because I'm primarily building a brigade, Spanish brigade, for um, General Dame, and skirmishers are generally sort of two on a little base that you put out in front of the uh, battalions. Um, so that's how I've done them, but I mean they could equally be used in um, sharp practice or something like that It's just you know, you just have to mark if one of them dies um, the 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 sort of one at the back is going to be a command base um, I'm waiting on a flag uh, to come and that will finish that off, but um, I thought that gives me um, Yeah, a nice nice addition to the well as I say the skirmish element for the uh, Spanish uh, brigade that I'm building. So there you go, that's what I've been up to. Um, uh, as usual, plenty of variety. At one point I thought this was going to be, you know, 15 mil all the way, um, but um, came good in the end and uh, a bit more 28 mil came through at the end uh, of the weeks. Um, and um, continue to work my way through my backlog uh, and pile of opportunity. Um, plenty of good fun. Uh, variety is always really good, I think. For me, it helps uh, in terms of just keeping the mojo going. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, any questions, stick them down in the uh, comment section down below. Any comments, obviously down there, really, I read everything. So grateful for uh, all the support. Uh, very, very close to 3,000 subs, um, which has snuck up on me a little bit, um, but really exciting to, to hit that kind of uh, mark. So if you're not a sub already, please consider hitting that subscription. Um, doesn't cost you anything just gives me my ego a little bit of a stroke so um, and we all need a stroke from time to time don't we anyway hope your gaming's going well hope your modeling and painting's going well um, and I hope you're staying safe and I will see you again soon this is Dom signing out